Amen. It's good to see each and every one of you here this morning. It's good to be standing here, still alive. It's the first Sunday, and we are all in the house of the Lord. Amen. I've been stuck in prayer, a mighty prayer, since yesterday. Had a young man praying while we were here interceding on behalf of others. And the young man prayed long. He reminded me of the late, great Reverend Dr. Claude Lambert Jr. and Deacon McGray and Oh, my God, Deacon Underwood and my Godfather, Deacon Jones. And the whole time, this young man was praising. He was worshiping him and saying, Lord, thank you for making a way. A young man thanking God for making a way like he didn't ha already had the life experiences that we have experienced already. And when I left here, I was just thanking God for making a way. Um, in the heat, we were able, Deacon, Deacon uh, Chris and I, we went down to Howe County and Went down to that fabulous hospital. Amen. I said, I'm going to work at this hospital because they got carpet all on the floor. Oh, my goodness. Dick, I kept talking about that carpet, didn't I? And the professionalism of, of everyone that we came across and didn't even know. They were so loving and um by the time we reached the overseer's room, it was almost like the red carpet had been laid out as we entered in. And I thank God for making a way and keeping her. Amen. And um, she said, they told me I'm, I might come home tomorrow. And, and I said, she said, and I said, hope so because I really want to go to church. What person you know? It's in the fight of their life. And when they get released from the hospital, they want to go to church. Some of us, want first thing we want to do is go and check the bank account. Make sure that my favorite food that they told me and my discharge not to eat is there. Help me, Holy Ghost. So I encourage you today to just come on in the room. Come on in the room. Because we serve a true and living God. He's a God who moves mountains. He's a God who caused walls to fall. He's a miracle worker. Amen. He's a deliverer. He's a healer. He's a keeper. And I just want to say, Lord, I thank you. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Amen. Hallelujah. There is a word from the Lord. Amen. 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 If you can stand on your feet and open your Bible to first. Kings, amen, chapter 18. I love you, Jesus. Woo! I worship and adore you. 
just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. And you know what? We were there even visiting an overseer. Amen. She has a way of just talking to you and introducing you to Christ all at the same time. I said, I got to work on that, right? I got to perfect that thing. Amen. Because everybody came in the room. They came with grace and love, and they were so attentive. Deacon Chris, when the guy came in with the, the, the overseer's food, De uh, Deacon Chris said, man, thank you so much. The young man was getting ready to give him overseer food. They was just giving out love and grace, right? And Deacon Chris said, no, man, I was just playing with you. But they came and they entered in with a heart of giving and a spirit of love. Amen. First King chapter 18, verses 41 and 42. And Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink, for there is, is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. You may be seated. And if we were to tag this message today, it would be worship before the rain. Worship before the rain. Pastor, thank you, uh, and that we were not ashamed or afraid to go back out and to the North X. Amen and praise. Amen, because we came to worship him. Amen. Amen. We came to worship him today. We came to give him all glory and honor today. And we should do it every day. Amen. Back in 2020, life changed across the globe. Amen. Y'all remember? It was a thing called uh, the coronavirus, COVID-19. Amen. And, and it hit us hard. It hit us from out of nowhere. Amen. It, it shook our, our spirituality. Amen. We, we started seeing evidence of, of not being able to buy food like we used to. Amen. People were furloughed, furloughed off of their jobs. Amen. Some people even lost their jobs because they were too afraid to come out and to the elements to go forward to work. Amen. Uh, we even lacked money. And we lacked medical supplies. We lacked leadership. We even lacked education. We lacked child care. We even lacked toilet paper. And the list could go on and on. Amen. But all of those things lacking in 2020 were real then and still even more today. However, we cannot and must not claim this current condition of lack as our permanent reality. In fact, by the power of the almighty God and in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, it is time for us to claim the promises of God and expect abundance. Amen. A lot of times we go through, we don't expect God to do nothing or anything. To move on our behalf, but we, we say we are believers. We say we Christians. Amen. So as we focus on God's abundance this morning, we're not simply awaiting abundant life. We are expecting abundance in our, in our lives. How many of you are expecting abundance in your life? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand, praise, and tell the Lord thank you. In our text for examination this morning, God had brought drought and famine on Israel to show his power to Ahab. God was letting Ahab and his wicked wife Jezebel know that they needed to change their wicked ways. And if they did not, the circumstances would not be good. After three years of famine, God sent his prophet Elijah to tell Ahab it was going to rain. Uh, Elijah said to Ahab that he was hearing the sound of the roar of an abundance of rain. First Kings 1841. He told him to get ready because there was going to be a downpour. Ahab and Jezebel could not stand the sight of Elijah because he was a prophet and servant of God. Have you ever noticed how wicked people uh, hate righteous people for no reason at all? Mm -hmm. They will hate the righteous simply because we represent the one, the true living God. Amen. And they will rebel against him. Amen. 
So uh, uh, all Elijah did in 1 King 18 was to show up. Sometimes God is just telling us to just show up. No matter who's there, no matter who you know talking about you, no matter that they know that you don't like them or just carrying a garage or got an attitude, show up in the name of Jesus. Because you're not showing up for the foolishness, amen? You're showing up in the love of God. Hallelujah. Although Ahab wanted rain, he did not want Elijah to be right or to be the one in control. So after announcing to Ahab what was going to happen, that rain was coming, Elijah went to the top of Mount Carmel. There he got down on his knees with his forehead on the ground. 1 Kings 18.42. Can't you just see him in that position of worship? Elijah sent his servant to run back and forth several times to see if the rain had started. Seven times his servant came back with a bad report, but Elijah did not get out of his worship position. A lot of times, you know, we praying and asking God for a thing, amen, and it's not about his time, but our time is about his time, amen, but we got to stay in position, amen. We got to continue to worship him. Amen. We got to continue to give him the glory. We got to continue to love ye one another. Imagine how he felt every time the report came back that nothing was happening. Each time Elijah told the servant, he said, go back. Despite the repeated negative reports, Elijah never gave up. Sometimes we just want to give up. Sometimes we just want to throw in a towel, amen, because we can't fix it or we can't figure it out or they're not responding the way that we want them to respond in the time frame that we want it to happen. So Elijah stayed right where he was, worshiping God. We come here every Saturday. To the sea. You know why? We stay right where we are in prayer. Amen. We've been praying with Sister Maddie for some time now about a situation. And the praise report came through yesterday in prayer. Hallelujah. Because we stayed in position. Amen. We didn't give up. It wasn't our situation, but it was God's to deal with. Amen. And because we believe in the power of the almighty God to move, because we know her heart. Amen. He made a way. Just like Elijah. We got to hold on. We got to get a real good grip. We got to hold on and be strong. We can't throw in the towel because the drought won't last long. You got to keep on praising him. You got to keep on worshiping him. You got to keep on striving. You got to grab hold to your faith and hold on. Hold on to God's unchanging hands. Because God will bring you out. He'll bring you out when you can't even see a way. I'm a witness. December, my world was just crumbling. Amen. But I know I had to go. Amen. I know I had to leave. Didn't know where I was going. Amen. But he made a way. He brought me out of the bondage I was in. Hey, and he brought me into a real uncomfortable situation, amen, for about two months. And I cried out to him. I even told pastor, just don't feel good. Didn't make me feel like I wanted to use drugs, but I couldn't seek the Lord, amen. Pastor said, if you need the church house, it's available. If you need to come into the church, just let me know and I'll meet you there. But stay in position. Stay in position. Praise her. Because the abundance of rain is coming. You don't have to wait for the rain to happen. You can start worshiping them right now. When God was ready to release the drought, he sent Elijah back to King Ahab. Then Elijah instructed the king to go up, eat, and drink. 
For there is the sound of abundance of rain. In other words, it's about to rain big time. If you have been experiencing a drought in your life, whether caused by a pandemic, by the climate of your own character, or the evils of your environment, uh huh, please know that the drought is about to be over and an abundance of rain is on the way. Give the Lord a hand, praise, and tell him thank you. Now, 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 ordinarily a prediction of rain is bad news, amen? It, because it spoils your parade, it dampens weddings, or wastes even a car wash. But when you have been in a drought, dragged out over an extended period of time, every drop of rain is like liquid gold, which enriches your life. I thank God for the drought that I was in. Amen. Amen. And I'm expecting him to do even the more. But see, I got to stay in position. Amen. And I got to believe in him and believe those things that I want. Sometimes we limit God. We limit him. Right? We, 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 because we feel like ourselves, we're not good enough for it. But Jesus died on the cross to save a wretch like you and me. He paid for our sins. And God loves us so much. So why do we continue and sometimes limit his power and his ability? We learn here over and over and periodically that he's immutable, right? He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. Amen. We learn about the, his character. So he sees and hears and knows all. So why are we trying to hide and fake the funk? He already know. He's just waiting for you to stretch your hand and say, help me along the way. Lord, forgive me. Right? He's just waiting. He's just waiting. Amen. <laughs> He's just waiting. Ordinarily, a prediction of rain is bad news because it spoils the parade, amen, and even the car wash. But when you've been in a drought, dragged out over an extended period of time, every drop of rain is like liquid gold, amen. Your financial drought, your spiritual drought, your emotional drought, your creativity drought, your productivity drought, all of your droughts is about to be over. But God wants to give you an assignment. Amen. Are you ready to receive your assignment? The first thing you must do is go up. Rise from your doldrums and depression. Get up from your pessimistic perspective. Stop expecting the worst. Amen. Leave the pit in which you have been accustomed to holding your pity parties. Leave it. Walk away. Look up at a damn time. And tell the Lord, thank you. Elijah was a man who held belief when situations turned dim. But he held his belief. When promised rain remained absent, Elijah held on to his belief. And just as God promised, it rained. So I encourage you to ju just hold on like Elijah. Amen. And believe in Christ. Amen. Tell yourself. Encourage yourself that it's working out for me. I might not see it, but I keep pressing. Amen. I might not feel it, but I'm going to keep holding on to God's unchanging hand. If he did it for you, I believe he can do it for me. It's working out for my good. Look to the hills from which come of your help and know that your help coming from the Lord. Secondly, secondly, your assignment is to eat and drink. Now, Elijah could have said many things to Ahab after the victory on Mount Carmel. He could have condemned him for the idolatry. Mm -hmm. He could have done a little dance and said, I told you so, I told you so. But there is no record of such activity. Instead, Elijah told Ahab to go eat and drink. Because the drought was about to end. Elijah told them there was a sound of a heavy rain. Even though you don't see the rain or feel the rain, 
Go ahead and start celebrating its arrival now. Amen. Praise God to Sister Joanne. Amen. She showed up and showed out today. Amen. And, and she felt a little nervous. And we just told her to hold on. It's okay. You don't need that paper. Let the Lord use you. Amen. Because we believe, touched, and agreed that it was going to be all right. Sing unto the Lord. Amen. We're not here for a performance. We're here for a purpose. And that's to lift up the name of Jesus. We need to recognize the fact that if God doesn't do it, it's not going to be done. Amen. That's why we have to keep pressing on in our prayer and to not give up. We have to hold on no matter what. Now, 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 the last thing to do in your assignment is to listen for the sound of rain. There's a difference between hearing and listening. Amen? When you want God to do something for you, amen, you got to be still and listen. You can't be hearing Tom, Dick, and Harry, amen? That committee in your head. You got to rest in him, amen, and be still and listen. I don't believe he heard, Elijah really heard the sound of rain with his natural ears. He heard it in the spiritual realm by faith. He was listening to the spirit of God. He believed what God said and began to act on it before he saw the manifestation of it. I always listen to the best of my ability when I'm at work, to the voice of God when he tells me to get up and go move around. I ran into a young lady the other day who made the best seafood salad I've tasted in a while. I was like, okay, did she steal my recipe? This is pretty good. But we met each other in the spirit. Amen. Amen. She gave me a sample. Then she gave me a large one. But when we, we, we started talking about the Lord the whole time, right? And she asked me, what was the address of the church, what time we start? And she said, do y'all need any volunteers? Oh, Jesus. We got folks, some churches, they've been here all their life. And we're still waiting for them to serve. We're still waiting for them to give. Here's a complete stranger. But see, it, 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 it manifests itself when, you know, you talk about the Lord, you know, like-minded, like-spirited people. Amen? So we need, we need that kind of faith like Elijah. Amen? He hit his knees. He put his face between, between them and, and sought the Lord. We're not given the words of prayer, but we do know what he was praying about because he kept telling his servant to Go back, hallelujah, and look toward the sea for the rain clouds. Perhaps we aren't told Elijah's words because God knows that the human tendency is to take the words and make them into some kind of magic key. You know how we like put the yeast on it, right? You tell somebody something, right? And they go carry it, right? And they, they, done, they done added something to it or they done took it, took it away, amen, and, 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 and thinking that they are helping you. Just talk to the Lord. He's waiting. He's a good listener. Some will look at Elijah's posture and believe that the posture was the key to getting an answer to prayer. But these things are minor. What is key is the attitude of the heart. Mm, mm, mm. Your heart can stop you from doing so much. Your heart your heart, your heart controls that thinking, amen? We need to get better. Lord, help us. Soften our hearts, amen, amen. Elijah prayed expectantly. He was expecting God to do something supernatural. He was expecting that abundance of rain. He was confident that God would answer him. God said he would. God said he would. If he said it, he going to do it. In the book of James, we're told, uh, if any of you lack wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe, not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. The point is clear here. If we pray for wisdom or anything else and doubt, 
our prayer will be ineffective. Help us, Holy Ghost. But this is where we have trouble, isn't it? Some seem to believe we shouldn't pray for anything that we can't see ourselves being able to accomplish on our own. We don't want to pray for a healing because the doctors have said nothing can be done. I'm a living witness. The doctor gave up on my son. They said at the age of nine, he wouldn't be around no more. But Jesus, hallelujah, he's 34, y'all. He's 34. He's 34. Hallelujah. No. Does he have full functioning of his bodies and everything is healthy? No. That's why I know God is keeping him. Blind in the right eye. A collapsed right lung. Amen. No pancreas. Amen. No spleen. But he's able to get up and go to work every morning. He's able to lend a helping hand. He's able to say, Ma, I love you so much. He's able. He's able because God is able. Oh, Jesus. God is able. God is good. God is patient. God is kind. We don't want to pray for God to provide for a new venture because we don't think we can afford it. And not necessarily just with the money, but the wherewithal. We don't want to network with others because the fear of them looking at us as that being, you know, being inadequate and things of that nature. But if God put it in you, just like Moses, he going to give you everything you need. Just got to believe in him. Amen. We want a sure thing. We want it to be easy. Amen. <laughs> Truth be told, part of the problem that some have is that they are afraid to really trust God. Why is that? All you got to do is look back over your life and look where he brought you from. Do the math. JC said do the metrics. But do the math, right? How many times has he brought you through and out? How many times has he saved you out here on these streets? How many times that you don't even know he made a way? He protected you your children, your family, your friends. How many times? Another problem, as I said before, is that we limit God, not believing he's a miracle worker, not believing he has supernatural powers, not believing he can move mountains, not believing he can raise the dead. But you know why I believe it? Because the Bible <laughs> told me so. Amen. The Bible is the true word of God. Amen. It's a number one bestseller. Amen. <laughs> worshiping strengthens our faith. When we read God's word, we are worshiping him. Amen. Doubt could have caused Elijah to give up, but his worship kept him strong. Roman 4 tells us of another person in the Bible who had absolutely no human reason for hope. Doubt and unbelief came against Abraham. Amen. But it did not defeat him. He became strong as he gave praise and glory to God. If praise and worship worked for Abraham and Elijah, guess what? It'll work for us also. God has done amazing things. God has done things that the doctor can't even do. Oh, my God, raise you up off of your bed of affirmities. Amen. And you don't want to worship him? There's more to it than just coming and sitting. Amen. You got to open your mouth. Amen. You got to pray for one another. Amen. You got to give. Amen. And even if you can't do that, just show up and be in the midst. Oh, my goodness. Because sooner or later, you're going to catch on fire. When you worship God, he will send the rain of his spirit upon you. And it would drown all the Ahabs, you know, the haters, <laughs> the negativity, and all the other resistance in your life. 
I encourage you today to take your position and praise the Lord. Worshiping before it begins to reign in your life. God promises remain true for us today. God will never leave you. God always protects us. God will give us strength for every battle. God will give us the graces necessary to endure all suffering. Amen. God will forgive you even when you have sinned against him. Oh, my goodness. God will never stop loving us. Yay. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For God, you are the lifter of my soul. I owe you a praise today. I owe you my worship. You have never failed me yet as we stand all over the church. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Ah, God is good. He's merciful. He's kind. Amen. I love him. I used to, I used to have a problem with my fire versus your fire, right? But you ain't been in my shoes. <laughs> That's why I love him the way I do. And he's worthy of my praise. He's worthy of my adoration. Amen. And every time I hear the testimonies, it just makes me just love him up even the more that I made the right decision to follow Jesus. So will there be one today? Who has decided, we're all, we're, yeah, we're, this is a saved house. Raise your hand, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a saved house today. Have you decided to follow Jesus? Listen, we have a wonderful pastor, amen. He preached a funeral on Wednesday. And he asked a question, he referenced everyone should have a BA date. And I'm like, B.A. I'm like, what else he talking about now? Right? And as he continued to minister, man, we had a sea of people in here. Right? B.A. stands for born again. So what is your born again day? Some have been in fellowship and in church for years. Right? But maybe you need to rededicate your life to Christ so your walk can be different. Your heart can be different. Amen. And I, I thank the Lord. I said, oh, at first I didn't think I had a born again day, right? But when I looked back and thought about June 18th, it was a Father's Day, 1995, when I said no more to the, the disease of addiction. That was my born again day. Because I specifically asked God to deliver me from the drugs. Deliver me from that promiscuous behavior. Deliver me. Set me free. And guess what? He put things in place because I put myself in position to receive it. Amen. And I kept on praying. I kept on praying. I had a praying mama. I had a praying auntie. I had praying people. Overseer reminded me of the conversations that my mother had with her when I was out there. She said my mother would call and said, that gal done left again. Overseas said, but we still praying. 29 years later. Set free. Prayer changes things, right? But we got to continue to pray for one another. Yeah. Pray for one another. Amen. So if there's one who desiring prayer, it's your time. Amen. Thank you all for your obedience and how you prayed before uh, went out to pray and came back in the church. How you feel? Made you feel a little different? Amen. Hallelujah. Just, just there quit. 
I bought some um, um, bands for a vacuum cleaner that was given to me. I couldn't get that band around there. I said, Holy Spirit, please help me. Please help me. And after I said and I thanked him, that band stretched right out. I said, oh! <laughs> Just like that. And I'm like, man, why didn't I ask you for help the other day, <laughs> right? But it's a learning lesson. Yes, it's a process. Thank you, Deke. It's a process. But he will do it. Especially if you know your heart. He move real quick. Amen? Will there be one? Amen. We're going to turn the portion of this service over to our pastor because it's time for communion. Amen? <laughs>